Welcome back. We're going to continue our discussion on acids and bases. And we've already finished learning how to approach Arrhenius acids and bases, and then Lowry Bronsted acids and bases, and finally we're on to Lewis acids and bases. While I didn't talk much about this concept, I did introduce what Lewis acid and bases are. A Lewis acid is an electron pair acceptor and a Lewis base is an electron pair donor. It's important you pay attention to the words here. Is this electron pair, okay? It's not just an odd electron or three electrons or four electrons or five. It's always a pair of electrons. I guess four would be two pairs, but it's an electron pair. Right now, let's say you have a compound. How do you know which electron, uh, which element in that compound is going to either donate or accept that electron pair? All right. Now, I would have to rekindle your memory from 170, okay? Because you do need to know that how to actually successfully solve these problems. So I have some examples here. Okay. Now, do you remember when we learned about the electron pair geometry and molecular geometry? Well, you don't actually quite need to know the names here, like whether it's octahedral or tetrahedral, but you still have to know how to write those X, A, X, 3, E, X, 4, E. I know most of you were very comfortable with that particular material when we learned it, so it shouldn't be very hard. But let's go through some examples to figure out those AX3 or AX4 stuff so we can actually conclusively determine which one, whether that compound is an acid or a base. Now keep in mind, you're only doing this once for one compound on an exam, so it shouldn't take you a whole lot of time, all right? But I got you five compounds to work with, so hopefully you will remember this at the end of this video. All right, if you go to your periodic table, you recollect that nitrogen's Roman numeral is 5A, okay? That means it's got five valence electrons, right? And hydrogen is in group 1A, that means it's got one electron, but you got three hydrogens, so it's three electrons total. So when you add them all up, it's eight electrons, right? Very good. Now, I told you the element that's least in count goes to the center. Now you may not remember it now, but I did say that because you all got it right on the exam, so you did get it right. All right, so you got one, two, three, four, and five. Each of the electron from a nitrogen combines with, sorry, each of the electron combines with an electron from from hydrogen, right? We did this, so, you know. Go. So you're left with every electron from a hydrogen combined with every electron from a nitrogen. So we've used um, three of the electrons on the nitrogen and all three electrons on the hydrogens are used up. So we have one A, which is the central atom. We have three outer atoms, and we have one pair of electrons, so A, X, 3, E. So the rule of thumb here is E stands for an electron pair. Okay, so if you end up with an E, then it's a base. If you don't end up with an E, then that's an acid. It's just that simple. All right, very good. So B is group uh, 3A, I believe, and uh, hydrogen is group 1A. 3A indicates it's got three valence electrons. 1A indicates one electron, but then we got three uh, sorry, this should be chlorine. Apologize. 
seven electrons. So we have a total of 21 electrons. Right, sorry, that should be seven electron times three equals 21 electron. So we have a total of 24 electrons, right? So boron goes at the center and it's got three electrons, right? Now chlorine each has seven, but only one electron can be used to bond with the chlorine. So one electron is used up, that means it still has three pairs of electrons that's unused. But again, that's not so that's not big deal. Right? We, we're not concerned about that. Similarly, Cl and then the one electron is remember anytime any any chemistry class you take you need two electrons to make a bond okay if you don't know that at the end of all your chemistry courses then you've just probably wasted your precious time for nearly two years all right so that's exactly what we're doing here so cl okay so what do we know now well we have one central atom we have three outer atoms. Now the E stands for electron pair on the central atom, not on the outer atoms, right? So we have AX3, there's no E. Well, lack of E means it's an acid. So it's AX3, it's an acid. So only if your central atom has either one E or two E's or four E's, it doesn't matter, okay? It is an acid. All right, here we go. Same business here, boron is in group 3A. You kind of see where I'm heading with this. Hydrogen is 1A, so this is really what, what I wanted to do second, but unfortunately at BCL3. So hydrogen is one electrons times three, so we have three electrons total, we have three electrons total, so we have a total of six electrons, right? And boron again goes at the center and we have three electrons on boron and each of those combined with three of the odd electrons on the hydrogen I mean hydrogen only has one so there are, more, there are no more extra electrons left on the hydrogen again we're left with a for one central atom three outer atoms no electron pair left on the central atom so it is an you see, when I said in 170, chemistry is a conceptually oriented material where things are extremely interrelated. Now you see that we did not waste the material or the knowledge that you learned in your um, Chem 170 material, right? Because we've tied it back again. So you may not feel really bad now that after you hear me do this, All right? pH3, again, phosphorus is in group 5A. So it's got five valence electrons. Hydrogen is 1A. So it's got one electron times three. So it's three electrons total, so eight electrons. And then phosphorus is the least in number. It goes at the center, so it's got three electrons. Okay. And hydrogen, hydrogen, and hydrogen. Well, we had five, you only used three to bond the phosphorus with the hydrogen, so we're left with a, a pair. Sorry. For some reason, when I try to circle, it thinks I'm hitting the key twice, and that's why I had to repeat it. So, anyway, so we got two pair, we got an electron pair, so it's A, X3, and E. So whenever you have an E, it's an automatic base. So pH3 is a base. H2S. Now, I purposefully included this because I don't know, at the beginning of all of this, I said every theory, okay, has its own ups and downs, right? Now, according to Lewis, you will find out that this will be uh, acid or base. Let's actually solve it first and then I'll explain that unique 
uh, difference between this theory and Laurie Brown's. All right, sulfur is 6A. So it's got six valence electrons. Hydrogen is 1A. So it's got one electron, but we have two. So it's two electrons, a total of eight electrons, okay? Sulfur is the least in count, so it goes to the center and it bonds with two electrons, uh, one from the sulfur bonds with one electron on the hydrogen. That means we're still left with four electrons on the sulfur, so we will technically have two pairs, and so it'll be A, X2, E2, like I said, whether it's one E or two E, and E is an E, and it's a base. Now, that is a little bit controversial because H2S, according to Larry Bronstad, is neutral, so it can act both as an acid or a base. You want me to show you? Here's how it is. So Larry Bronstad, H2S plus water, you know, as I've always said, one of your reactant is always going to be water, okay? Because it is equilibrium, we write double-headed arrow. If this functions as an acid, then this donates a proton. So every time you remove a hydrogen, you add a negative charge. So 1HOH minus plus H3O plus. Okay. Now, if H2S has behaved as base, sorry, for some reason, the ink seems to be not coming out all in one go. I don't know what the deal is. Okay. So if this behaves as a base, then it would have been the same, H3O plus plus OH minus. Which is why there's a difference. So according to Lowry Bronsted, okay, H2S can behave both as an acid or a base because it doesn't have a charge. Whereas Lewis predicts it's only purely a base. So, you know, but in reality, H2S can actually act both as an acid or base. But, you know, you have to go by the face value of the question. If I ask you a Lewis base, then you go by what the theory says. If you ask you Laurie Bronsted, then you go by what that says. All right. Anyway, so I've done five examples and I think uh, I've exhausted my options. So if you see this on the exam, then you literally have to work it out the way I have worked it out to figure out these code words to really determine if the code word contains an E or not. If it doesn't contain an E, then it is an acid. If it contains an E, it's a base. It doesn't matter how many E it contains, whether it's one or two or four or 10, as long as it contains an E, it contains an electron pair, which makes it an acid. If it doesn't contain an E, it doesn't contain an electron pair, so it'll be an acid. All right, well, that's pretty much all for Lewis acids and bases, and we are going to get into the concept of equilibrium, which primarily focuses on acids and bases, but we would also do some PHPOH calculations, all right? So stay tuned.